Kara Zorel escapes the dying planet of Krypton. She is delayed on her way to Earth. When she gets here 24 years later, she becomes Earth's newest hero, Supergirl. Welcome to the Krypton Report, a Supergirl podcast brought to you by Southgate Media. I am your host, Tyler Patrick. You can find me at JTY Patrick on Twitter. So let's get started on what's going on today in the world of the Kryptonians. All right, guys, welcome back to the next episode of The Last Daughter of Krypton. I got my man Chris here with me. What's up? And we got our little, the little man himself, decked out in his Kryptonian gear. Solo. Solo. He will be uh, commentary <laughs> with us about the the recently released Supergirl trailers. This will probably be the only time he's quiet today. <laughs> and I think he's still just like in shock. He's watched it with me several times now. I think he sees her up there with the screen. He's like, I'm four months old, Daddy. But, wow. He's like, I know what I'm looking forward to. He's like, You're right. he's like, we going to watch this Daddy together? He watched it with Uncle Chewy, too, which, that's me, by the way. And he was smiling the whole time. He's like, oh, I can't wait to watch Supergirl with Uncle Chewy and Tyler. So, uh, we just recently rewatched both trailers to get kind of just a refresher and really let it sink in. So, Chris, yeah. your first reaction. Okay, so, first reaction. I'm, 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 first off, before we even get into any of the details, I'm excited about this. I think it looks fantastic. You can tell they spent a ton of money on the I think pilot. it was, what, $14 million or something yeah, like that? Yeah, pretty much a film for the pilot. Um, yeah, yeah, Solomon agrees. Solomon agrees. I think um, it's great that they're pulling in Jimmy Olsen. It seems like he's already a mentor to her, which is fantastic. <laughs> I like I like the way everything's going. I think it's interesting it's an origin story, but we're kind of dropped in after she's been here for a while, and we're seeing her develop her powers and figure stuff out, and it takes that one pivotal moment when her friend's in trouble to really decide, this is where I have to finally use what I've been given. You know, I, I'm, I'm excited, though, man. I think it's, I'm it's ex- too good-looking not to be excited about I'm her. very excited, and I, you know, let's see. Glenn Winter directed the pilot. And Glenn Winter has directed, his resume is short and sweet, Smallville, Arrow, and Flash. So if you can't get, I think between Glenn Winter and David Nutter, those are the two superhero TV people you go to for directing. Well, and the fact that he's done so well on Flash, he's done so well on Arrow, I feel completely confident in what he's going to do with another DC Supergirl. Plus, the way that they have written the female characters in Arrow and Flash, it's fantastic. So I, I, I have all the faith in the world that this is going to turn out to be great. I completely agree. One thing that, like, not that I'm worried, but it throws up a flag. I don't know if you remember. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. pilot was directed by Whedon and looked amazing, like yes. a mini-movie. Yes. But then after that, you can definitely see the decrease in budget and size after the pilot. Yeah. So I I think we're going to see a decrease in budget and and probably a little bit in size. But the nice thing is with CBS being the one that's fronting it besides CW, even though CW is doing really well with their DC stuff, they they have more money. They have the ability to kind of expand it a little bit more. I mean, it's it's kind of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2 looks so much better than Season 1 because Disney is like, oh, we should probably back this a little bit more and they gave them more money. Now, here's one thing I find interesting. I was watching, I, keep, I wonder how much of this trailer is linear. Because I was, I was yeah. reading some things online, people talking about her, her actions, and I thought my first reaction was, well, that's just her being her character so people don't know that she's Supergirl. But then I thought, if this is before she comes out as Supergirl, mm-hmm. but then the scenes where it's just her and her sister, she doesn't seem as awkward, nerdy-ish. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm wondering where a lot of these take place in the... It's, it's, it's definitely not... I don't think it's linear. I, I agree with you there. I think... Um, well, I, I think even Jimmy Olsen, the way that he reacts, and especially at the end, if we can jump there, where he gets her cave. Yeah. I think that's that's not... That shouldn't be in the first episode. That should take a little bit of time. I wonder how long the first episode is going to be, if it's going to be like a double premiere. Because... Just I looking at double. looking at this trailer, that feels like two hours to me. If you were to, well, because it, it does, it has a budget of a movie. It might as well be two hours. I mean, that's 
You know, maybe that commercials. Like, that's an hour and twenty eight minutes. That's that's a solid. That's a solid film. And it's possible, you know, like I've seen other shows do where the the pilot doesn't get picked up, but the pilot's done like a movie, so then it could just be Supergirl, a TV movie. Yep. Yeah. If it wasn't going to be go to series or something. Yeah. Although we luck out because this one is going to series. Yeah, CBS ordered. That is something to point out. CBS has ordered a full series. Yeah. It will be Monday nights. Yes. On uh, starting November, which is odd because I was hoping. Well, I figured we September. Get, yeah, we with get all, this, all premieres. You know, CW is known for doing their premieres in October. Mm-hmm. So I was hoping maybe we get it out a little earlier in September. Yeah. Now, what's also interesting is this show is basically going head to head with Gotham. Yeah. Now, I would say, even though Gotham has its its fan base and has its following, there's a whole other group of people that's really going to enjoy Supergirl. So I think we're going to see a varied audience. But here's the thing. So, do you know why Gotham got renewed? Because the ratings were not great in, in TV. But it's also Fox. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. It actually got renewed because they're online viewing. Mm. Was so spectacular. That's the thing. Is like, so I think Supergirl might actually stand a chance to to, to outrun it on on network. I'll tell you, and what, Gotham will stick with the online views. I'll, as of right now, if I had to pick one to watch in real time, I would pick Supergirl. Yeah. Not that I don't like Gotham. All my fans out there, if I have any, oh, no, who I listen love to Gotham. me on Before the Bat. Mm-hmm. I enjoy Gotham, but I'm. I'm a Kryptonian at heart. Well, I look at it this way. I love Gotham, but for me, Gotham is not... Uh, it's not a Batman TV show. As much as you this want it to be. This is Supergirl. Exactly. So for me, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to watch Supergirl in syndication, uh, and I'll keep watching Gotham on Hulu when I'm done. You know? Exactly. Especially knowing that Fox is like, oh, our online viewing is great. Yeah, let's just keep the show. So, my first reaction to the show, I like it. All... All editing aside with the, with the music and stuff, it gives it a different feel. Mm-hmm. I like that it's brighter than a lot of the other Maybe shows. Too. Maybe too. Um, it's gonna. It seems fun and enjoyable, but yet serious at the same time. There's a lot. The action you see of her fighting the lumberjack. Yep. Because we yep. know he's the the the, the villain the, the and the pilot. Yep. Um, her portrayal seems great. Yeah. It's 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 um. Felic- it's Felicity Smoke, but if Felicity Smoke had superpowers. Can we say pre-season three Felicity Smoke? Yes. yes. pre yes. cause uh, yo Season one. Yeah, because that nerdy, fun-loving yeah. character. <laughs> um, Allie McBeal. <laughs> yeah. We're, I love when she's like, you I'm, know, I'm hot. And I'm like, no. I'm like, your face will get smashed with a two-by-four and your lips just got stuck. Like, Ugh. But I get what she's saying. Um, I'll be talking more about Cat Grant in a new yeah. an episode coming up. I'll tell you, actually, I love I love the dialogue. Um, why don't we call her Superwoman? Well, what's wrong with girl? Like, as, as a male feminist, I think it's really interesting to see, like, putting power back into that. Right, because, like, I was thinking about this. Like, Supergirl has always been defined as more of a sidekick character. Mm-hmm. Even though she has her own comic book and everything like that, she's had her own storyline. She's always had partners. And yeah, she's always, and even in her solo adventures, like, she's always been looked at as, like, the side character. She's not, like, okay, you have Batgirl, which is basically saying I'm a derivative of this other character. She's yeah. a derivative of Batman, even Batwoman. Mm-hmm. But, like, you have Wonder Woman who's, like, I'm my own character. Yeah, and, and so and Supergirl... Supergirl's a direct descendant of, of, of Cal, and... Although he, I'm used to Superman training her and helping her find her her path. That but gets okay. This is where it gets weird. This is where this is where the story gets me. Everything else I'm cool with, and like I've thought more and more about this. My initial thought, and we've talked about this before, is I would have preferred Super would be more of this world Superman. Yeah, I, I'm I'm indifferent, but I lean more towards I don't like the idea that they reference her cousin. I, there's multiple references in the pilot. I don't want to see them throughout the series. And, like, it just keeps, to me, kind of cheapening her character. Yeah. And there's the line in the trailer where she's like, are you bulletproof? She's like, I think. I'm kind of like, if I, I don't know about you, but if I was from a planet that was blown up, uh-huh. and I was the last survivor, and then I find out there's another person who happens to be my family... I'm pretty sure we'd be buddy buddies and hanging out. Yeah, and that's where... And especially if we found we were powers. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I would have, like, teach me. Let's, you know, it would have matured my own abilities. Yep. I get the other idea of, like, her having to make the choice if she wants to come out and use them to save people. That's her choice. But at the same time, in theory, if 
Superman Cal can do it, so can she. Yes. Now, I, I will tell you, we, we kind of talked about this um, when we saw Mad Max, and we were wasting time watching this before. And I, I was like, well, for me, because they haven't cast a Superman, we see him technically in the trailer, it's just a shadow with a voice, and they probably just cast a voice. I'm almost wondering if Superman's off planet. See, if there's something like Superman's gone, off planet, or, or you know, is this post doomsday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this post doomsday. You know, because it seems like we, it seems like Jimmy Olsen is not as young. No, he's old. Jimmy Olsen, he is. He's older than Kara. He's Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. Yep. Or something. So he yep. has a direct link so to her. There's time. Cousin. So I'm wondering if he's on planet, if he's hiding, if he's off planet. It is past Doomsday. Did we get past Death of Superman? You know, so that's that's all opening a lot of like ideas. Plus, this doesn't adhere to the DCU, the the cinematic universe. So and we can't same, have this be post. And at the same time, it, it could tie into it. Could just tie into it. It's very up in the air. Now, one thing: this is me nitpicking. Yeah, and I'll I'll admit. I've always liked and heard it as Kara. So uh, that they went with Kara. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, it actually, you know, when I said it, it's like hard to say. Every it's time, Mark K. Yeah, like it. it's like every time someone references like like Kara, I'm like, Ugh. I don't know. Maybe it's just because most of the Supergirl that I I remember growing up with was from the animated, okay. and then even on Smallville, it was Kara. So that's just what I've always heard, and you know. Light I will. I will tell you. I don't miss the white gloves, and they can stay away. I like that it's more of a traditional super. Now, here's something that was funny. <laughs> when she first walks out in the trailer, and she says, "I'm not going out like this." Yeah. That outfit to me is like it's almost Smallville. a direct <laughs> small girl. Yes. <laughs> then the next outfit's the short skirt and just the boots, which yeah. is straight up like the from movie. the, the yeah. Helen Slater movie. Yeah. And then we get the final reveal, and I'm like, I like the suit more and more in yeah. action. Um, I love that they didn't make the joke about this is the symbol for hope. Well, like, I like that she pointed out that it's, it's, it's the family crest. The family crest is supposed to mean hope. Yep. You know, and that's something people forget is it is the family crest. It's it's not an S. Yep. And it's one of those things that's evolved over time. Yes, originally it was an S. <laughs> hope starts with H, stupid. <laughs> it's a foreign language from an alien world. It's a symbol. It's supposed to be kind of like, you know how Led Zeppelin, there was Led Zeppelin, back me up here, people, three, four? Yes. Don't hate me if I got it wrong. Three. But when it was all the the symbols, Yep. and the one symbol people said looks like Zoso, Yep. but it's supposed to be just a symbol. It's yeah. the same thing. Like it's, yeah. it, it didn't mean anything. It's a symbol. It's a symbol. But it, it looks like an S. But everybody thought it was Zoso. Just like, just like Zod's symbol of Man of Steel was a sideways Omega symbol. Dum, dum, dum. But I'm I'm really excited. Like I like the 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 effects look great. A little bit of Hank Henshaw we see in his department of whatever weird thing it is about aliens and how she immediately partners up. I almost feel like some of that Henshaw stuff might be more towards the second episode. Yep. Because like I said it just I a thought, six minute trailer. So much of this feels like it's got to be a two hour two parter or something. Or like, else we saw everything. You know, it's like... Um, I was surprised we didn't see a, a flash of Toy Man yet. We did. Did we? I'm telling you, that's who the guy is that she, who's palling with her, who, like, is helping her make the costume. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm telling you, that's going to be... That's going to be Toy That's Man. Winslow. I'm okay with that. I almost forgot that he was in. I'm like, who's... I'm like, oh, yeah. That's okay Winslow, that. who's going to be Toy Man one day. I love the line. Oh, I, so you're gay. No, no, I'm super gay. Oh, that makes sense why you don't like me. I did like that we don't see Helen Slater or Dean Kane in this. Yep. We know that they've both been cast. But overall, like this trailer, I'm excited. I did. Okay, how did you feel the scene with, I love it, where she's going like, I need to go save them. And she goes running in the alley. Did that not give you a Sam Raimi Spider-Man feel? Oh, totally. Totally. I was like, yeah. I will say, I, I love um, I love where she jumps off the roof. Oh. She comes right back. <laughs> Because I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is fun. Now I'll tell you one thing I noticed is like that per- that first production still of her, yep, in the costume and everything. Like her, like this is just me paying attention. She had high heel boots, but if you watch it in it, she's wearing like a flat boots. Like I got some behind the scene photos of her, which have been released. Like mm-hmm. just, 
She just looks awkward in that photo. Yeah, she looks uncomfortable. And then that's when they finish wrapping the highlight, the Superman cupcake. cupcake. Then they release all these cool promos, and you can see more in the costume, the red stitching. So it's fantastic. I'm excited. And and, and because it is more of a colorized television show as opposed to something dark like um, Arrow, and even Flash to an extent, we get to see so much more of of the costume, so much more of the... um, the lightheartedness of the show. And in a sense, like, you know, we're not going to go into the whole what they've done with the DC right. films, but Superman's supposed to be bright. And in this, this mm-hmm. is filling that void of being bright yeah. and being something else compared to the darkness that we get with the Man of Steel was a little bit darker. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and, and I like that it's going to be a fun show. It has it has the humor already, yeah, it's, it's even in the trailer. It's not helps. okay to... I mean, it's it's okay to enjoy your comic book shows and have fun with them. Yes, it doesn't all. have to be dark and brooding all the time. That's what I, I always Lois hate. Lois and Clark was hardly ever dark and brooding. Lois and Clark was, was great because it was like a rom-com yep. with Superman. It was moonlighting with Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great because yeah. I've been re-watching Lois and Clark. Solo agrees. He's he does. Like, yeah, moonlighting with Superman. So I, I'm pumped. I give this trailer like high praise. Some people want to. If I had to rate it, man, I would honestly, I'd give it at least a four and a half. And the only reason why I'm saying four and a half is because I feel like we have to see if this is a double length episode or yes, not. I agree. If it's a single length episode, I think it's going to be a little hard to to get through. But other than that, man, I, I think I'm like, it'll be so fast you'll be like, huh? You'll be like, oh, is this... Now, here's, here's something else I've been thinking of. You know, we know that it's from the producers of Flash Arrow, and I've talked about it being the same universe, but at the same time, I don't know if I want it to be or not right now. Um, I don't want it right now. I would like the first season to be standalone. I would like the first season, because I would like for her to really identify herself. Yes. I'm, you can mention Star Labs. You can mention Central City. You can mention all of that. I want there to be just this is... This is Carl. Because in one sense, I'm like, I want it to connect, so I'd love to see all of them together. In another sense, I'm like, because we know what they're doing over on Flash, what they're building to. Yep. And we know that they, they have a new show spinning off that's, uh, what we discuss. The Legends of Tomorrow. On another. People meet later at an undisclosed time. It'll be discussed on the uh, the Flash Arrow Power Hour. Yeah, I uh, podcast. But so I'm like, I want it to stand on its own. Well, and do look something. at Arrow season one. That was all really Oliver Queen. Yes, getting to to be Arrow and figure out how to solve the world's the world's problems with his book, and, and it was great because we weren't forced to have to learn new people. Yes, season two, awesome. We get we get freaking Barry. Yes. And then all of a sudden Flash happens. Now Flash is allowed to cross over with Arrow because we've already seen Barry and Arrow. You know? Until we get something more definitive about where the world we stand in in Supergirl, I'm sticking with just Kara for the first season. Because on one on one hand, you have the ability to reintroduce characters yeah. on Supergirl that we've met on Flash, but a different version. Yep. yep. Which can be cool, but at the same time, it's like, Depending on who the character is, how many times can we splinter one character? And, and you know, they've never talked about Metropolis or Gotham or any of the other larger cities in DCU on Flash or Arrow. Because they're not allowed to. Well, I mean, but, okay, so let's yeah. even get past, like, the legalities of it. Well, she's not in Metropolis. She's in Nationals, National yes. City. I couldn't remember where she was. So she's in a whole city of her own. Right. And... That's awesome that she's somewhere different. It's kind of like, but you know what? And, and, okay, so if I'm, if, if we can go even pa- a little bit further past this, well, Solo's like, yeah, where is Arrow? Where is Flash? Come on, buddy. Um, I think we need to really take back and have a moment to say, holy crap! We not only have Flash, we have Arrow, which you know they're they're smaller superheroes in the DCU. As far as some people are concerned, because they're not Superman, they're not Batman. The DC is bigger than that. Right, I know, but most people are like, oh, DC, that's Superman, Batman. We're getting Supergirl, and we're getting it on a larger network and a larger scale. 
you know, what's next? Teen Titans is coming, TNT. Yep. We're talking about the possibility of even maybe seeing a Nightwing eventually. Well, you know, I think Nightwing's stuff, supposed to man. be part of the Titans. Which is program. great. So that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, we're going to see, for sure this fall, we're going to have Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and then we still have Gotham. Yep. Legends of Tomorrow is in January. I love, I love that in Gotham. They're like, we can't talk about Batman because we still have some stuff we got to work out, so we're just going to call him Bruce. Baby Bruce. And then we're hoping that Constantine gets saved. Man, I don't know why Constantine couldn't get picked up in Legends of Tomorrow or, or even Flash Arrow. Yeah, I mean, if they introduced it, like, if they just brought it back as the mid-season replacement... If you brought on Zatanna and all of a sudden it's like... You could start bringing in the magical element yeah. of the DC And all of a sudden you're just like, Barry runs into a coffee shop and as he walks by, John Constantine smoking a cigarette on the corner. It's just perfect. It's perfect. Well, because... And I can't even remember his name off the top of my head, which makes me sound like a terrible fanboy, but I don't care. The guy who plays... Who plays Matt Ryan. Yes, Matt Reiner. He was. He's even said... I don't care where it goes. I just want to keep doing it. I would love... Like I said, like, you know, people have said, speculate on a different network or sci-fi or Well, Netflix. sci-fi hasn't said no yet. I'm fine with whatever. I just... I think it would be cool if it was on CW for the sense of just keeping that DC Well, and CW can pull it off because they have shows like Supernatural. They have shows like Vampire Diaries, which is a little more esoteric, a little more gothic, a little more brooding. They can make this work. They can make it work. Especially, I mean, if you get... The producers to look, you know, work on it and oversee it. And you get it, like I said, he doesn't, I don't need John Constantine everything, but like you bring Constantine no, back. I don't, even as, need, I don't even need a solo Constantine show. Bring him in, bring him at the beginning of season four of Arrow in some form. And then when season two of Constantine starts, um, make it, like I said, make it a shoot for a mid season replacement. Yep. You know, make it, you know, Keep it a, tw- a 12, 13 episode yeah. show. I, and and here's season. the thing. I know this is just I was talking about the trailer of Supergirl, but here's the thing. This universe that's being created is getting bigger and bigger with every show that happens. And I don't know. I think, I think we're actually going to see what the DC universe has not been able to do in cinema that Marvel has. Yeah, Marvel. But they're doing it on TV because for me, TV makes more sense for DC. Yeah. Marvel's there's so much you have to do. Marvel's TV has not been doing well. Agent that's Carter is cute, but that's about it. And Agent, yes, and it, it works to a point. Like it's good, but it's not great. But I mean, that's not including. I'm not including Daredevil because it's Netflix with a different style of TV. Or Punisher, it's gonna be. You know what I'm saying? So that that's a different style. I'm talking about just like networks and stuff, cable esque channels. So DC is really knocking it out. I'm glad that. What I want is when they release Titans or whatever, or Legends of Tomorrow, I need it on my Thursday night. Okay, Legends of Tomorrow on Thursday is probably going to happen. Yes. I want Titans on Friday or something, because I want to spend every night of my week watching a DC show. Well, when iZombie stops working, which after season one or two, that's going to be what it is, we're either going to see Flash or Arrow move to Thursday, or we're going to see Legends of Tomorrow take over Thursday. You're going to see CW having a DC show at least three or four nights a week. Do they air stuff on Fridays? I don't even remember. Uh, they air some back episodes, some runs, the There's three like, runs. I feel like you could, if you've got the right show, that could be your Friday show. Yeah. Um, Pick up the I, writers I, from Constantine. Like I, Constantine Friday night. Why not? I definitely see Legends of Tomorrow being on Thursdays. Yes, well, Thursdays, especially with it being a new show, Thursday is prime. Because you put Flash on Tuesday... Arrow People are willing Friday. to stay up a little later to watch TV on Thursday because they know Fridays they're going to be kind of an easier day at work. Starting Friday the weekend. Fridays, I think, are always the worst day for shows. That's why I think constantly. It's not like it used to be with TGIF when we were kids. Oh, TG. Miss you. But all right, so we're, we we digress because we love our DC and our comics. It's hard not to. We've looked at some of the new photos. Uh, is there anything we're missing as far as news wise? I did see one thing was. Uh, <laughs> So I cannot pronounce his name, and I feel bad because it's a different name. But if anyone's a fan of The Mentalist, oh, yeah. the guy that was on, I'm going to try this, and you know that I'm not great with names. A Yeoman Yeoman? Oh, yeah. That's good enough. <laughs> Yeoman Yeoman. 
O W A I N Owen, and then Y E O M O N Owen Yeoman. So we'll be playing the alien convict Vartox, Ooh. who looks like Burns in the comics. Ooh. He's been cast, and then okay. there was a, an off quote um, from the actor who's playing Hank Henshaw. Yeah, that he's alluding to cyber. Superman or some sort of cybernetic. Okay. Um, so I'm cool with that. Like I'm excited. I'm like, all right. Um, I mean, everything you're saying right now to me is just it builds up the series and it's gonna be fun. I guess there's so much to the DC universe that can be thick and can be good. I just don't want to have. I don't want to see where I'm watching a character like. I don't know. Like I don't want to see a character show up on three or four different. Like, I don't want to see a movie version, a TV version, and then another TV version. Yeah, and, and, and that's kind of like where, where I was saying that I like what um, CW and CBS is kind of doing with all this. We're getting these um, tertiary villains that are still really important to the, the dialogue and the plot, but they're not mainstream villains. Now, is there, is there any other villain, like, you, now that we've seen the trailer, you think about, like, I'm telling you, I want to see Parasite. I'd like to see Parasite. And you know who, I got to think about one more. You know who would be a good character to bring into Supergirl? Hmm. Dr. Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. we saw a great Dr. Hamilton in Smallville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got killed off in Man of Steel in the first ep- like the first film yeah. of this year. Like, this universe, he's dead, so he's not coming back in the films. No. Let's go ahead. He's, he's always tied close to Superman. He would be a great character to have. Because mm-hmm. um, even, I think, I think they've alluded to maybe Star Labs. I can't remember in Flash having more than one facility, or if it's just the one facility. They have said that there are multiple facilities. And so I think the idea that not? Hamilton works at a different Star Labs um, would be really cool. Yeah, I, I, I think the only one that I would like to see would be Parasite, just because I think it would be really well, interesting to see how they pull it off. Rather than rewatching, I mean, we saw a version of Parasite in Smallville. Which wasn't bad, and I've been rewatching all the all the animated stuff with Solo because he loves his cartoons. Heck yeah! I think Livewire. I've said that before. Would uh, be cool. Livewire would be cool, but I don't know if they can pull it off on TV. You can. I mean, it's so easy. You just gotta downplay everything. Yeah. It's just don't make it like Electro. Right. I'm Electro. <laughs> but all right. Don't make it. Don't make it dubstep, Jamie Foxx. <laughs> But I'm just trying, like, you know, there's, like, villains, like, they're pulling out that I don't really remember because I haven't read the, as much of the 60s comics. And there's a lot to do. I just, I don't want to, like I said, I want this to be very much Supergirl show. I don't want people to compare it too much to, she's Superman, but just a girl. Like, I really want her to be able to stay on her own, yeah, her and, own and spotlight. I like the fact that, and this will be the last thing I say, I like the fact that she learns how to fly in the trailer. Which means that, <clears throat> you know, she's not Superman. She's She is still learning. So she can develop her powers and we get to do it with her. And, and we're not going to take small little time to do it. No, we're not going to take ten seasons to be like, oh, he can finally fly? <laughs> it, was a, it was a mental block, is all it was. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, because he flies in season four when yep. he's not Clark. He's yeah. Al. And then he flies again. But when he's Clark, he's got this mental block. But anyways, let's call it what it was, brain fart. <laughs> brain fart can't fly, <laughs> like we. The one thing that I wrestle most about this series, and this is my, just reiterating, this is the final thought here, is how I feel about Superman being alluded to and being part of this yeah. without being a part of it. I think if they I want make Kara, him off planet or they make him have passed, I'm fine with everything. I want Kara to stand on her own. Yep. I want it because... I want that it gives more reason for the backstory of everything uh, to come into play of why she was adopted by the Danvers, why she's um, and this Kara definitely is going to be, or I'm sorry, Kara is definitely going to be some sort of amalgamized super. I would love it if like she, if, like somebody accidentally calls her Kara and she's like, oh, it's Kara, uh, okay, and then she just goes with it, or uh, like they're like in this sort of like. And they're like, oh, it's Kara. She's like, no, it's mm-hmm. Kara. And they're like, are you sure about that? Are you sure? It's fit on. Huh? Heavy K? All right. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay. I guess, you know, we have Cal, which is spelled with a K, so Kara 
you know, I guess. Yeah, I well, know. you wouldn't want to call it kale. But it's all right, a tasty vegetable. Now to close out this episode here, we're going to say a few things. One, um, if you're enjoying the show or you have any speculations or anything like that, please hit us up on Twitter at Last Daughter Pod. Uh, also, find us on iTunes. Give us a review. Yep. Even if you hate us, we're sorry. We just do what we do. And the last thing is moving on to the newest news about the show Krypton. Yeah. There is none. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> so that show, <laughs> it was like it was all seemed like it had some motivation going. And then they were like, oh, oh, oh. we're gonna fizzle no. out here. Um, like I said before, I think if they did that show, if they made it, about, it really, if they want to do a show called Krypton, and they make it a show about two brothers, mm-hmm. about Zorel and Jorel, yep. and then bring Zod into the fold mm-hmm. as like this best friend, and really make it this show about. These people who are all seeking to better their world, and one, you know, like three best friends type thing, and one starts to go a different direction. There's your drama. There's your tension. You know, and you could shoot the entire thing like they did Fantastic Four in secret, where nobody knew about it behind scenes. Yeah, screens. maybe that's what's going to happen. All of a sudden, September is going to be. Yeah, they're like, here oh, by the way, here's Krypton. Um, you know, we've seen Star Trek on TV, we've seen Enterprise that on TV, mm-hmm. your budget is right in there, we've seen Battlestar Galactica, yeah. it's in the same, it's doable, it's, it's not, it's completely doable, it's not doing anything, so, for me, Solo, and Chris, we're saying, thank you, for listening, yeah, yeah, hear you next time, thank you for listening to the Krypton Report, the Supergirl Podcast, hit us up on Twitter, at Krypton Report, Leave us a review on iTunes and let you know what you think, how the show can be better, your thoughts on Supergirl, and anything else you feel like chatting about, and I'll catch you next week.